I've never had anybody show up and say, I didn't learn a thing from that. What a waste of time. <laughs> no, they leave with their minds blown. They leave with a lot of knowledge and a lot of relationships that they didn't connect. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Walker. Welcome to today's webinar entitled Neurokinetic Therapy, Assess Movements, Not Muscles. Joining me today is Neurokinetic Therapy International Instructor, Dr. Kathy Dooley. Uh, just a bit of a quick background on NKT firstly. David Weinstock is the founder of NKT and also the author of the book that's on your screen, Neurokinetic Therapy. In this book, he describes NKT and teaches us how we can help relieve pain and also correct dysfunctional movement patterns. For now, though, we have the great pleasure today to speak with Dr. Kathy Dooley, who is one of NKT's international workshop instructors. So what we hope to provide you today is with enough information to decide whether you think this level of therapy is something that you can use in your practice. Kathy, welcome. Hello. Are you there? All the way, it's 5.30 in the morning in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for getting up and speaking to us. Uh, you're oh, here. that's fine. It's lovely to speak to you again. Uh, you're here oh, in yeah. March uh, taking uh, some level one courses around the country. So what have you seen change in the last four months uh, in the world of NKT? Oh, what's wonderful about NKT is I mean, probably one of the things that drew me to NKT was the evolutionary component of it. Uh, it tends to grow. Uh, we have over 2,000 members. Uh, this is in just two years. We have just grown exponentially. And uh, I have seen just from my travels and being able to teach uh, quite a few NKT level one and twos, the, the, the evolution of things that happen on our support page, uh, the, the questions that I get are, are becoming even more highly involved. And I, I feel like it's a, a technique that grows with its audience. So uh, I have seen some really, really great things. So I took the course with you in March and I've been in practice for 20 years and I was pleasantly surprised by the, the content. Uh, a lot of things kind of came together for me. As you are, as someone who's seen some amazing things that the NKT can do for a person, what tips would you have for people to better assess someone? I think one of the main things that, you, that I kind of left with was, yes, do the assessment, keep it basic and uh, don't try and assess muscles specifically, but assess movements. Mm -hmm. You got it. It's. Uh, I think that when people read David's book, they have an, a certain expectation that usually gets uh, blown out of the water when they show up. They, they may have done manual muscle testing with, uh, with other techniques in the past. I know that manual muscle testing was part of my ortho neuro examination, and uh, the way that we muscle test in NKT is quite different because it is patterning. Uh, it's looking at movement patterns and seeing how you could alter the neurological components of movement patterns through muscle testing and observation of the client's movement. Really um, amazing stuff. And uh, what NKT mostly provides you with is a, a basic protocoling, a way, an observational technique. The other thing that blew me away with not just the content of NKT, but your anatomy knowledge. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm an anatomist, so I wouldn't expect uh, anybody that, that doesn't spend as much time in the lab as I to, to, to definitely uh, have that level, but, you know, I'm so passionate about sharing it. For, and that, being an anatomist has made me an absolutely better clinician, and I cannot speak enough of it. I, you can't even kick me out of a laboratory. I love it so much. I, I currently teach for six universities, so... Um, I, I really, I, I love traversing from, from school to school and, and making new connections that I can share with, with the audience and share with people that, that don't get the opportunity and, and the privilege to spend as much time in the lab as I. Because I have that honor and privilege, I like to share it. And how many cadavers would you have seen? Oh, I've, I've dissected over 800 bilaterally. So that explains a lot about your knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's yeah. awesome. One of the things I noticed within the course too was people, they didn't know what to expect. They were expecting to have some treatment protocols thrown at them as well, but that's not necessarily what NKT is especially about. No. It's more about the assessment. Would that be right? Absolutely. I think that I mean, we do have some basic protocols for certain things like single leg stance and some certain observational techniques, but 
but but I don't even want people to be limited by that. But the problem with with a, a standard operating system sometimes is that you can get a little too confined to it and become a little rigid. And I do like a good standard operating system, believe me. I use things like the Selective Functional Movement Assessment and FMS for those reasons. They're fantastic. But what NKT provides me with is a little bit of observation that's more open-minded and looking for connections between structures. Uh, for instance, someone's jaw might be a huge player in the way that they laterally flex the spine. And I may not see that necessarily in an operating system, but I'll see it with NKT testing. It does feel a little bit hocus pocusy sometimes. I mean, it's <laughs> not to yeah. not to make any slight on it, but some of the no. connections just seem so far apart. I think what's fascinating too is that once you take NKT, you start to understand why the heck did I not look at these relationships? Oh, when so it comes true. To, you know, when it comes to scars, I mean, if someone has an abdominal scar from an appendectomy or cholecystectomy, abdominal scarring can impede upon neurological timing and sequencing of core musculature. And if core musculature motor control is affected, then how the heck are you going to stabilize Husserl's anterior to permit shoulder movement that's well on track? So to me, a scar is like something that pulls the train slightly off the track a little bit so that the wheels are just grazing across the track. And then once you start to release a scar, you push that train right back onto its track so it can glide again. Then a shoulder problem suddenly is not really a shoulder problem, but really a scar problem. It's so true. Like you said, it's once being exposed to this, you can, I mean, everyone's always says as, as therapists, you know, everything's connected, but this adds a very functional and very physical uh, dimension to that statement. Mm -hmm. It's not esoteric anymore. It's, it's literal and uh, intellectually, it doesn't make much sense initially, but once you start practicing it, it's amazing. It is. And, and once you start to intellectualize and, and understand the anatomy of the structures, it becomes very apparent. And I think that what people want to jump to in the beginning is they want an immediate and absolute answer as to why. Mm. And I think that is very, a very hard way to, to go about a patient when there's so much subjectivity involved in pain. One of the other things that was pleasantly surprising for me, which I'm surprised you guys don't promote more, is the fact that once you've been to the course, you are then engulfed in this community. The NKT <laughs> Scholars Facebook page is a magnificent resource. I oh. sent a link with a bunch of videos on it, and I'm going, wow, this is awesome. So all those things that we've done with you over two days, which, and Kathy doesn't take breaks. She just plows through. <laughs> so you're getting, you're getting um, all of Kathy all at once. <laughs> yeah, immediately after, you can go over all those things again through the videos and you can ask anything to yourself, to Perry, to David Weinstock himself. You can ask very specific questions about uh, specific clients that you might have and there's a bunch mm -hmm. of people there to respond. I think that's up over 2,000 members in there now. Yeah, it's really, Jeff, it's really hard to to relay that to people when when, uh, when marketing and, and talking about NKT because you almost have to experience it to really appreciate it. We talk mm. about it. We talk mm. about our incredible NKT scholars community and our follow-up, but this is the reason why I teach for this seminar series. I've been approached by other seminar series to, to assist and teach, but the reason why I want to work with David Weinstock in this community is because it attracts people that want to help other people. They don't want to keep their knowledge secret. They want to help each other out. They want to do what's best for the profession. There's mm. something very amazing and, and weirdly magical about the NKT community. It really does draw people that, of that similar type uh, that want to share their knowledge. Mm. Well, I must say, I've, I feel like I have a decided advantage over the therapists in this area, knowing this mm. information now, because it, uh, you've said uh, during the course, it's do the simple stuff first, which I have been doing and some of the other people that I know have done the course, and you just build on top of that stuff. Yes. So rather than trying to understand everything all at once, why the jaw is affecting the hip flexor and why the diaphragm is affecting a big toe and all those sort of things. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, sticking to the simple stuff, if a client came to you with a, a shoulder issue, can you give us an idea roughly of what sort of process that you'd go through and, and or variations that you might um, consider? 
Absolutely. Uh, from an NKT perspective, um, one of the first things we talk about is starting local. So locally, I would do a basic ortho neuro examination with my chiropractic background, but when it comes to NKT, I would do local testing, and then I would look at global relationships mm. as well. So at first, I would look, is there an intrinsic tracking issue in the shoulder joint itself? And then do I look at adjacent structures within their history? Do they have um, some type of compression issue due to cervical trauma uh, that affects the shoulder innervation? Do they have uh, ipsilateral or contralateral abdominal stability issue that's affecting the tracking of the shoulder? Do they have then something even more global like gait where uh, the, the shoulder works with the opposite hip and gait? Is there a relationship with the opposite hip? Is there a relationship with the opposite foot? So you start very local and then go global, and that's NKT principle. Um, but when it comes to shoulder, you know, there's three joints you got to look out for too. So um, it depends on uh, what their history is, what, how they are presenting to you in their discomfort, their level of discomfort, and then uh, you go from there. Okay, and can you, from a, so that's more of a, a practical, physical application or explanation, uh, insofar as neurokinetic therapy, how is that related to the motor, motor control theory, the actual, the, some, the neuroscience behind what we're actually doing? Well, if there's a tracking issue, which is uh, what NKT is really fantastic at helping with, because that is a motor control issue. Um, in the absence of a lot of structural damage and, and you're really working on just a stability issue, a, uh, a motor control issue, NKT can fix things extremely quickly when it's that kind mm. of issue. And so what you'll look for is the proprioceptive relationships between adjacent structures. Let me give you an example. If I have someone who is having problems, a very common problem of abducting uh, the shoulder past 90 degrees and they've experienced some discomfort and I see that they actually roll the shoulder forward they have a thoracic kyphosis hyperkyphosis and they roll the shoulder forward tracking the humerus a little bit too anteriorly uh, in relationship to the glenoid fossa then I can look for a proprioceptive relationship between anterior shoulder muscles and posterior shoulder muscles to see if there's a tracking issue there Mm. And when I test with NKT and look for these neurological patterns of motor control, I can actually establish connections at the motor control center with neurological testing, with NKT muscle testing. Can you explain a little bit too, not necessarily about the, the shoulder, the neuroscience or the, the connections within the brain that we're trying to influence? Firstly, dig out and then how we influence them after we've applied a treatment. Such a great question. Um, first, you're assessing the limbic system component of establishing need. Of, of what you want to do in that motor pattern. So you're looking at uh, basic patterns of homeostasis, olfaction, memory, and emotions. The, the good old take me home of the limbic system. After you look at that, then you're looking at uh, the actual motor pathway and you're looking for the established pattern. Uh, that is more a cerebral cortex, basal ganglia. So you're looking at uh, the actual strategy of human movement. What part that we affect the most greatly with manual muscle testing is the proprioceptive part. Uh, and that's mediated largely by the cerebellum and spinal cord. So uh, we use um, manual muscle testing to look for proprioceptive pairing uh, relationships um, at the motor control center. These are actually very respondent to, uh, to failure. And so when someone fails a muscle test, it's an opportunity for learning. One of the biggest things I learned from NKT was the importance of failure yes. and how you can actually change a patient's or client's opinion about failing something because <laughs> most people aren't very good at failing. They don't want to do it, but actually that's how we learn. So through manual muscle testing, you can actually teach the motor control center a new pattern and that influences a new motor program and then a whole new systematic way of approaching that movement. Yeah, very true. I've found that within the scope of applying or practicing NKT that you do have to be very careful of what you say to people. If you say, okay, resist this, oh, that's weak, then people immediately put up a defense mechanism because you've said they're weak. Oh, you so, said the W word. <laughs> yes, I know. I have learned. I know you said it very often during the course, but I did slip a couple of times. I gave myself <laughs> an uppercut. <laughs> 
but yeah, the the language that you teach within the the course as well is of being practicing now. You've realised how important that is to the way that you approach your clients and the way that the the NKT is received as well. So very yeah, important. Yeah, you get something huge about that. Like uh, I get a lot of feedback about not only NKT and the incredible nature of it, but the importance of language. <laughs> yes. It's, very crucial with the patient. I never use the W word because the moment they feel like they're in competition with me, they're going to try to win in KT yes. and try to power through tests. And I, I kind of welcome it in a way because I can see all their cheats. I see what they do to try to brace their abdomen or try to shove a shoulder up. And uh, if they want to try to to power through a, a manual muscle test, I'm going to find them. <laughs> We're yes. detectives. <laughs> yes, uh, my observation skills have become a lot more acute, uh, I must say. And mm -hmm. you can, as you're saying, when you, if you're testing obliques or abdominals, you can see the neck tensing up, you can see the jaw tensing up, and that just gives us an extra clue of where we might be looking for um, a, a muscle that's doing more than it actually needs to. So as it is now, what I'd like to do is if you are on the call at the moment, there, I know that there's people who have done the course uh, level one uh, mm -hmm. or, and or level two. So if anyone has any questions specifically that they want to ask Kathy, you can just type it into the question box there and we'll get those answered for you. And the reasons you can think of why shouldn't you do this course? If there's something that's that you'd like to ask that's preventing you doing or attending the course, jump on now, write in your question and we'll see if Kathy can't provide some insights uh, because this it's a very, very powerful tool to have in your tool belt. And I really don't know anyone that shouldn't be doing it or shouldn't have at least be exposed to it. So if there's uh, any questions, please type them in the box now. In the meantime, I'd like to also ask Kathy another question about, oh, I guess we're just touching on it then, the cheating conversations, the way people try and cheat, for want of a better word, in these tests. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see most commonly? So I'm kind of asking this question for myself. <laughs> to <see>. ah, <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I have, I have a couple of relationships. Uh, abdominal bracing, breath holding is uh, a super common one. Um, I work a lot with patients breathing. Uh, we talk about it in level one and expand upon it in level two, but I'll definitely give you a, a nice basis for abdominal stability and being able to, to watch for it in level one. But um, in level two, we get into the nitty gritty of it, but... Uh, the, the actual breath holding. People love to hold their breath. And mm. uh, last time I checked, when you're holding your breath, you're not really doing a lot of gas exchange. So mm. <laughs> it's a pretty big big effect on motor control. If you're mm. not you know, experiencing gas exchange, you're going to alter a lot of neuromusculoskeletal relationships and neurological relationships. So I see breath holding. A lot of people grip the table. Uh, they really want to win. They don't want to fail. And so I actually encourage and, and applaud them when mm. they fail a muscle test. I have to change their entire mindset and I say, look at that, that's awesome. Let's see if we can get that <laughs> to actually be able to, to meet my, my pressure on this next thing. They're amazed. I've never, like, I, I know that you're experiencing this too, like all day long. They're like, what? How mm. is that even possible? And if you, if you guys have never experienced manual muscle testing, please, you know, Watch some of David's videos. He has them out there for free, and come to my uh, duly noted YouTube channel, and you'll see a couple of uh, NKT videos. And I think that you'll you'll see the neurological connections and the, the wows on people's faces. They they love it, and not only that, but it's it's very results driven. And uh, I think you'll see that. So that's very true. The duly noted blog that you have. I mean, there's. Even Popliteus has a fantastic little video. It's about three minutes long. That is the best explanation I've seen for accessing Popliteus ever. And, oh, wonderful. And you've just got it up there floating around in cyberspace. It's fantastic. <laughs> well, actually, it was the NKT community that said, Dooley, uh, we need you to, to do a video on how to palpate Popliteus and, uh, for our testing purposes. And I said, okay, I can do that. And it turned out to be one of my more watched videos and uh, I'm happy to do that stuff too and I, I'm very responded to my community if they tell me to do something I tend to do it <laughs> oh that's fantastic so, that's, that's a nice part to have your instructor doing that it's cool <laughs> that's awesome and that's duly noted that's D-O-O-L-E-Y-N-O-T-E-D duly noted yeah and that's you're posting virtually every day 
it's, it's oh, part, yeah, of, part of your repertoire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Um, if you if you want to access old videos, and there's a lot of NKT corrections on there. If hmm. um, you want to check it out for yourself, and you're not quite sure if, if NKT is right for you, then uh, definitely go to neurokinetictherapy.com and, and look at David's videos on his YouTube. Uh, as well as mine, and, and hopefully that you'll get some good ideas of, of how we use NKT to to help advance um, our patient's motor control. Well, that's the primary reason I wanted to run this webinar this time round. Is that you're coming here? I mean, if if you didn't come here, we would have to be going to the USA or to Canada or the UK to get access to this information. I know Jenny's recently, uh, hi Jenny, I think Jenny's on the call, has recently gone and done her level three and she had she travelled overseas to do it because it wasn't going to be happening here anytime soon. So she's mm -hmm. had to do that. Peter has asked um, the Turkish get up, uh, is, which is a very functional exercise, is, is that part of the level two information that you'll be sharing? The Turkish getup is not something that I teach at NKTs, uh, but it is a, a fantastic correction for um, for posterior oblique sling. Um, you know, and, it, and this is not this is common knowledge um, that Vlemin uh, wrote about the posterior oblique sling, and I know Tom Myers has a functional posterior sling, um, and it's the uh, thoracolumbar fascia, the the glute, and the opposite latissimus dorsi. And yes, we do teach that um, that relationship, but the Turkish getup itself is not taught at NKT level two. No, I'm happy to show you in any corner on a break. <laughs> yes, Peter says thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and you know that she'll do that, Peter. She'll, if she gets a chance to demonstrate a Turkish get-up, she will. <laughs> you know I will. I do, I'll do it in any airport, any any uh, break, anywhere <laughs> on the planet. And Cassandra has asked, uh, any advice for practicing for the Level 2 material? Uh, sure. I would look at the sling systems. I would look at uh, Volimin's uh, deep longitudinal system, uh, that uh, the posterior and anterior slings. I would study those functional slings in Tom Myers. Um, just so you can have an understanding of uh, how things work in an oblique fashion and in a lateral fashion, the lateral subsystems. So you can look at that material. Um, it's out there on the web. Uh, definitely review your jaw because one of my favorite things on the planet is to teach the jaw. I have the honor to work at uh, NYU Dental where they were, I have definitely benefited from their knowledge on the jaw. And uh, nobody knows a jaw quite like a dentist so or a maxillofacial surgeon. And I, I learned a lot from them as far as the anatomy and how that works. So uh, we're definitely going to glove up and palpate the jaw and, uh, and test that. So definitely study that. Definitely study the core mechanism. You want to look at the, the breathing mechanism of pelvic floor, diaphragm, anterior and posterior core musculature. So look at that, please. And, um, and it never hurts to look at your anatomy. Just open up the book a little bit and look at functional opposites, things that work in pairs um, and gait, which would be helpful. So that would be the deep front line in uh, Tom Moore's yeah. work? Mm -hmm. And you're going to be fine. You don't have to overly prepare. The whole point is that you just show up. <laughs> you show up, you get a ton of knowledge, and you take it home and you use it, and you have a support system afterwards. I don't want you guys to feel like you have to do a ton of studying before you show up to benefit. You won't need to do that. You really just have to come, just p bring an open mind, pay attention, Take some notes. You'll get a very, very nice PowerPoint when you're done that was made by David Weinstock, and you'll have an incredible set of notes. You don't even have to feel pressure to take notes because Jamie Francis, this dynamo that lives in Boston, has written incredible notes for level one and two. I think Justin did as well. Justin Lau had uh, uh, amazing notes. Uh, so um, please use their notes. Show up. Pay attention if you, if you wish. And, and just engage and learn, but don't feel pressured to prepare. So Cassandra says thank you, and also Eric says thank you for that answer. He actually of says, course. he said that great answer, Kathy. So oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no and, problem. And Glenn has asked, uh, how similar is NKT to applied kinesiology? That's a question I get a lot. I love mm. that question. Uh, not a lot. It's not all that similar. I think it looks similar from afar. I think it even looks similar when you look at David's book because there are certain relationships like therapy localization and reciprocal inhibition that we do share with um, applied kinesiology, but that's about where it ends. 
Um, I think it's a lot closer to the manual muscle testing that you do as, as an ortho neuro exam than it is anything else, and even that's not even close. Um, I just haven't found anything that really compares with, with neurokinetic therapy. And I, I hate to say this, but you just don't know until you show up. I know that's very obtuse, but I mean, I didn't know for myself, and I had the same hesita hesitations that most people have, like, oh, I've already done manual muscle testing, and oh, I already do that as part of my ortho neuro exam, and oh, I've taken some AK classes, and blah, blah, blah. But it's nothing really like that when you get to the nitty gritty, other than the fact that we all use manual muscle. Very true. And like you, initially, I actually came to the course because I'd been following your blog and seen your videos, and I thought, hmm, at worst, I'm going to get some good anatomy lessons from this <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you what that's enough <laughs> <laughs> and everybody uh, needs that yeah the NKT it was actually a bit of a surprise because I hadn't like we're suggesting uh, these people do at the moment jump online have a look at the videos have a look at the the process of what's involved and have a look mate if it's not right for you it's not right for you but I would feel a, a bit of an injustice if I didn't let people know mm -hmm. I like to bring great educational experiences to people. That's what drives me. And I think this is a good opportunity for people to learn something that they probably won't learn anywhere else. And uh, like I said, I've, I haven't seen it anywhere before. So go it's, in KT. Uh, yeah. I got to tell you, like, if you went to this seminar and didn't get something out of it, I'm coming to your house and I'm sitting down with you and saying, what can I teach you then? Because... I get so much out of every single time I assist David or the fact or when I teach and work with my assistants. I learn so much from my assistants. I learn so much from my audience. I've never had someone show up to an NKT seminar and I've taught 16 of them now, I believe. Mm. I've never had anybody show up and say, I didn't learn a thing from that. What a waste <laughs> of time. No, they leave with their minds blown. They leave with a lot of knowledge and a lot of relationships that they didn't connect. Mm. So I, I can't imagine not using NKT if you have it in your arsenal. There's that's A, but B, if you even if you just want to go learn some things and make a great network of people that are going to support you through very difficult cases, the 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 community alone is worth it. But you will use NKT. I can't even. I mean, having that tool, not using it, it's kind of like I don't know, owning something really cool and just keeping it in a closet somewhere. No yeah. way. Get out your toys and play with them. Um, where have you been in the, the last few months? Because I know you always seem to be traveling. <laughs> the summer's a little more quiet for me. Um, we had NKT Level 3 in New York in my new gym, which was pretty much a dream come true. And uh, I teach in Boston next uh, in two weeks, uh, a Level 2. And I taught in Boston last month. Uh, the summer was pretty low-key, actually, but in March, I taught five NKTs. Every single weekend was in KT. Um, from St. Louis to Australia to New York, it was an intense time. You'd be hard-pressed not to find an NKT at some weekend that you could make. Well, that's why I think it's important now for people, while the opportunity is here to in Australia, yeah, jump on it. <laughs> I would definitely jump on it, guys. I mean, you will not be remiss for changing your plans. We are going to have a fantastic time. You're going to learn a ton. Watch some of the videos. Please visit the YouTube for neurokinetic therapy. Visit mine, too, if you like, and you got some free time. But there's no way you will walk away from that seminar not completely glad that you came. I agree 100%. And you've had the <laughs> offer there that if you don't learn anything, Kathy will come to your house. <laughs> I'm kind of worried about people picking me up on that now. <laughs> Marie, Marie says, uh, can Kathy talk about the links between Stecco's technique and NKT? I see that's a recommended text. Uh, in the yeah, Stecco's a uh, manipulation, I'm assuming, is what she's discussing. Yes. Um, I mean, not really. I mean, it's a recommended text because it's a great way to perform releases in NKT, uh, we look for things that are facilitated or um, overworking, overriding a motor control pattern. And so uh, a lot of our neurokinetic therapists, uh, they use things like Stecco, things like active release technique to actually release tissue to be able to not override a motor pattern. So I know um, the fantastic Miss Jenny Richardson uh, uses Stecco's work 
and um, she uses that along with her NKT to get fantastic results. I personally don't use Stecco. I use active release techniques so um, and other types of uh, pin stretch techniques and, and dynamic stretching and a whole variety of other corrections. So if you are Stecco certified, if you do fascial manipulation, I think you will find it very congruent with NKT testing. Just on that point too, that's that's probably a very important point that I got out of attending the, the level one with you is that this really just shows you where to go. Uh, not necessarily what to do, but that's, like you said, I don't care. Once you've found out what you're dealing with, I don't care how you release it. We'll use whatever technique you want. This is just to help you find what needs to be released. Exactly. This is a very, very good question for Matt and probably something I should have brought up a little bit earlier. Uh, I would like to ask how NKT can complement a personal trainer. Oh, we have a huge influx of personal trainers. Uh, taking NKT and not only do you learn anatomy in a way that probably you have not learned yet, a very functional standpoint, I think you'll get a huge, huge anatomy lesson out of neurokinetic therapy and the, the relationship patterning is really what I should say, not even just anatomy but patterning of different structures together. You will have an, a, a tool, especially if you're allowed to do a, a test, like if you're allowed to touch, um, it's absolutely fantastic for if someone, let's say, bobbles their foot on a single leg stance and you're trying to get them to do a single leg deadlift, then you can look at the connections between foot musculature and core stabilization. Uh, that's just an example. And with a, with a simple, quick NKT test, you might be able to get their foot to stop bobbling and make your patients or clients safer. I really like NKT for personal trainers because it's a very quick and easy tool to help them get immediate stability, or at least a, a path towards stability. And, and clients are amazed at the results that they experience. Um, when it comes to pain, it's a little out of your scope to be able to deal with pain. You'll have to co-care with, with a, a practitioner that's able to deal with pain. But that's also wonderful too, though. You should be developing networks for when your clients have pain anyway, and people that speak your language. So even more reason to take NKT, because then you'll have an understanding of what your therapist is doing. I think there's not enough communication between all of these fields. I personally, I mean, I own a gym with two personal trainers, and they're two of the most fantastic people I've ever met, and two of the most knowledgeable guys I've ever met. I don't own a gym with a bunch of other chiropractors, which I could, that's fine, but I, I have a huge passion for connecting personal trainers, chiropractors, acupuncturists, massage therapists, osteopaths, physical therapist, the entire realm because people don't communicate enough about their clients and some of these clients are going to all these types of practitioners and if someone, if they speak a common language and they have a common understanding of a, a patient or a client presentation, it ultimately serves the client. And that's what it's all about, definitely. Yeah. There's, uh, we've got another question here saying, I'm not convinced there's a, a relevant point about how a therapist can apply NKT to the treatment practically. Because that's saying that you, you don't understand how it might apply to me as a therapist. I am a therapist, so maybe I can answer that for you because <laughs> I use it every single day in my practice. And I know the other 2,000 members of NKT do as well, so... Um, I'll need a, a probably a more advanced explanation of, of what they need me to answer. Uh, how long have you been teaching NKT now? I've been teaching NKT as a lead instructor since July of 2013. So I'm rounding out my first year. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's Peter again. G'day, Peter. Peter wants to know, is certifying for level two structured the same way as level one? Yep, exactly. Yep, you do your three case studies and... You either Skype or you uh, do an in-person exam. If you're local in Australia, you can talk to Jenny Richardson, Simon Tidd, uh, both fantastic for level one. Jenny can certify level one and level two. And she's the only one in Australia that can do that. So uh, absolutely please uh, utilize her. She's fantastic. Uh, or you can Skype with me or David. Coming going to the course is mind-blowing. But then the the support system afterwards is well, I haven't seen I haven't seen any other therapy that has such a network after the fact, which is fantastic. You haven't seen it because it doesn't exist. That's what well, that's what David has built. Yes, from what I've seen. Yes, Marie asks, is Jenny in Sydney? Jenny is actually in Canberra, she is. but she travels all the time, so you mm -hmm. might be able to catch. She has up a study her. group in Sydney, I believe. 
She does. Um, once a month. Once a month, she drives down to Sydney and does a study group. This woman's a dynamo. All right, we're just about out of time. Is there, if there's any last questions, um, if you're on the fence or you're not sure or you have any other misgivings, pop your question in there. If not, jump online, have a look at the videos. You'll see exactly how NKT works. And if you think that it's something that you can use in your practice, then I would highly recommend that you get along to one of the courses coming up in August, uh, which Kathy's taking. They're full of information, not only on NKT, but her uh, anatomy uh, knowledge is unbelievable. Oh, I can say thank that. you very much. I love Australia <laughs> so much. I'm so excited to come back. I mean, the I, I got to spend an evening with, with your family and, and these amazing uh, isms. I learned all these isms. It's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, I got to try uh, pavlova and all these fancy things that uh, Australia has to offer, especially Vegemite, which was awesome. And I still have it oh, in my yes. fridge. Jenny gave me some. <laughs> Um, I wanted to I wanted to let you guys know too uh, as a special thank you to Melbourne for bringing us back. Um, Live Strong Private Fitness, uh, the amazing Carols have invited us to come back uh, Andrew, to Melbourne. Yes. yes. Oh man, are they a dynamo couple? August 9th and 10th is when Melbourne takes place, and we're extending the early bird for that. It actually. Um, was about to expire today, the early bird. And uh, I asked David, please, can we extend the early bird? And he says, do it. Mm. And uh, we'd love to offer you guys uh, an extra week to save the $100 on Melbourne. I'm very excited about getting to teach at their awesome facility again. It's August 9th and 10th in Melbourne. Um, we're going to extend the early bird till July 16th. So please uh, save your 100 bucks. Uh, Why not? USD. <laughs> Sydney Level 2 is on the 14th and 15th, mm -hmm. so you need to have done the Level 1 and been certified in Level 1 to do that. And yep. the, there's actually uh, a Level 1 running in Sydney as well, which is on the 16th and 17th, which is a weekend, I believe. You got it. And you have until the 16th for the early bird for that as well. So we're uh, we're letting you have another week to think about it, to look at the videos, to, to read David's book if you find that to be the, the realm of things that you need, to look at my videos, to pump us full of questions if you have them. And I really hope you make the decision, folks. For the folks in New Zealand, it's a short flight away. I'd make the trip because it's a far way to come to the U.S. or Europe to, to come to the seminar. But if it's in your backyard and that close, I, I would take the time to do it. Uh, we're not going to be in Australia again for a while. It's going to be a good while. So I would uh, take the opportunity in this next month to get yourself to the seminar because, I mean, I will personally make my responsibility to not only show you a great time but to advance your knowledge in any way I can. And after the fact, if anyone who attends uh, either of those courses, can we get you on the, for another webinar like in a you know, two, three, four weeks after the fact if, in case anyone has any questions about what you've covered specifically to you? I'd be honored to do that. I think that's a really common thing actually that uh, I like to do it specifically for the folks that came to Australia um, just for a, a wrap up because you guys have a smaller network of, of people to, to communicate with as far as being on your actual homeland. Um, I, I'd love to do that for you and clear up anything and so uh, Jeff and I talked about as a special to, for you guys uh, just to have a, a nice webinar for, for you guys to wrap up any questions that didn't get answered. And sometimes questions come up way after you leave and you're like, why didn't I ask? Not only could you ask on our scholars page, we have a great support network afterwards, but it's nice to, to talk to me live as well. So mm. I'd love to offer that to you guys. Okay, well, just, just one last quick question from Neil, because I think it, it's quite relevant, particularly for the PTs that are on the call. Do Gray mm -hmm. Cook's theories on function align with this material? Well, I think you'll find in the PowerPoint a couple of Gray Cook quotes. I mean, I am a huge Gray Cook advocate. Um, uh, we, my business partners even are in a movement book club. Um, we are very <laughs> congruent with Greg Cook. I know I have, I have the right partners. They're incredible. <laughs> um, but even in David's PowerPoint, you'll see Greg Cook quotes. Yes, his, his ideas about motor control and stability versus mobility. Um, a lot of NKT uh, enthusiasts are also SFMA certified, FMS certified. I'm CKFMS as well as SFMA. And I utilize, I use SFMA and FMS in my practice every day. And I use NKT in my practice every day. They go together so nicely, so nicely. Uh, and you'll hear that from a lot of the NKTers that we all, we, we use the SFMA and FMS as our standard operating system. We look at that globally. And then NKT is what really gets us to the micro. If SFMA 
and uh, FMS are the macro, the big picture, like looking at the entire system, then NKT will help you micro that out. And if you want to hear more about that, uh, Perry and David have an awesome talk on NKT on movementlectures.com. If you want to hear the, the creator himself and doc, the marvelous Dr. Perry Nicholson talk about NKT and motor control and, um, and how that kind of meshes with uh, the macro of, of Greg Cook's work, then I would definitely go to movementlectures.com and, and download that lecture. It's worth it. All right. That's fantastic. So there's your opportunity, everyone. That's all we're doing today is just providing you with some information about uh, NKT. Some of you will take it up. Some of you won't. So once again, thank you very much, Kathy, for coming on. Oh, I can't wait to see you again. And I can't wait. House. Super excited. <laughs> yes. All right then. Well, thank you everyone for being on the call. Apologies for those who missed out. We did have we didn't have enough spots for everyone to fit on on this webinar. There was a great deal of interest. Uh, we've mm. spread the tentacles out wide and far. So uh, we'll see you in August. Thank you everyone. Well, great end to yours. <laughs> thank you. Good. Bye. Bye. -bye.